The first thing that we will note is that this box is open, so there is no material and therefore no mass for the top section of the box. So we're going to be disregarding that when determining the coordinates of the center of mass. Next, we will outline the right side of the box. And the question notes that the box has been constructed from uniform material. So what this means is that if we were looking at the right side of the box, and then we asked ourselves, well, where would the center of mass be located for the right side of the box? It would be located in the geometrical center of that square. So basically right there. And what we're going to need to do is figure out the coordinates of that point. And again, that point represents the center of mass for the right-hand side. Now we know that the length of the box is 40 centimeters, so let's start at the origin and see if we can map out the x, y, and z coordinates of that point that we marked on the right side of the box. So we begin at the origin remembering that the length L is 40 centimeters. We would have to travel halfway across the x-axis, so that would be 20 centimeters, all the way across the y-axis, so that would be 40 centimeters, and then halfway up the z-axis to get to that point, which is another 20 centimeters. So in summary, the coordinates would be 20, 40, 20. Now we have to do that with the remaining four sides of the box. Remember, the top is open, so we don't have to do this. Let's next look at the front side. We'll go ahead and mark the geometrical center of the front side. And again, we need to find the coordinates of that center of mass. We'll outline the front side just like we did before. We need the coordinates of that. The visualization might be a little bit misleading, but we'll start at the origin. And to get to that point that we marked, we'd have to go all the way across the x-axis. That's 40 centimeters. We'd go halfway across the y-axis. That's 20. And then go halfway up the z, which is another 20. So the coordinates there would be 40, 20, and 20. Next, we'll take a look at the bottom side. We'll outline the bottom, we'll mark the geometrical center, and we'll try to find the coordinates. So, begin at the origin, we go halfway up the y axis, excuse me, the x-axis, that's going to be 20, and then we go halfway up the y-axis is another 20, and then we have to go nowhere on the z-axis because we're lying on that x-y plane. So the coordinates there are going to be 20, 20, and 0. Next, we'll take a look at the left side, and we're going to go ahead and outline that, this side right here. We'll mark the geometrical center, we'll figure out the coordinates. So we're going to go 20 centimeters along the x-axis, 0 centimeters on the y-axis, and then 20 centimeters up the z-axis. So we have 20, 0, and 20 for those coordinates. And then finally we have to locate the center of mass of the back side. We're going to outline that right there. We'll mark the geometrical center, and here we go for the coordinates. We have the origin, and then we're going to move zero units along the x-axis, 20 up the y-axis, and then another 20 up the z-axis. So that's going to be 0, 20, and 20. So with these coordinates of the center of mass of each of the five sides, we can now proceed to finding the coordinates for the center of mass of the entire box. Let's start with the x-coordinate of the center of mass. Now here is the equation. Admittedly, it looks a little bit intimidating. What we're going to do is let the mass of the entire box be 5m. So that's for the entire box, and the reason we choose 5m is because we've divided the box into five pieces of equal mass. So that means that m is going to be the mass of each side. So we'll keep that in mind as we work our way through this equation. We're going to have to scoot these coordinates down so we can see them while we progress along here. So again, we're finding the x-coordinate of the center of mass. And when you look at this equation, you have this 1 divided by m. Now, m represents the mass of the entire box in that equation. Remember, though, we've chosen to call that 5m, so just be a little bit careful there. That's the mass of the entire box. And then we're going to multiply by a, a summation here. And basically, you just take the mass of each side of the box and then multiply it by the x-coordinate of its center of mass. So, for instance, if you look at the right side, the x-coordinate was 20. So we'll take the mass of the right side, which was m, and for some reason I said let 5 equal the mass of each side. I just realized that that should have been m. So I apologize for that error. That mass of each side should have been m. Probably some of you caught that. So moving on to the right side, we take the mass, m, and then multiply that by 20. And then we move to the next side, whose mass is m, and multiply that by 40, because that's the x-coordinate. 
you're just continuing along looking at the x coordinates here. So then we have plus m times 20 for the back side, or the bottom side, excuse me, goodness. And then we have m times 20 for the left side, and then m times 0 for the back side. So now we're just going to simplify what's inside of the parentheses here. We're going to have 20m plus 40m plus another 20m and yet another 20m and then plus 0 over there. So adding inside the brackets here, let's see, 20 and 40 is 60, another 20 is 80, and 20 is 100. So you're going to get 100m in the numerator over 5m, and then dividing that out would just give you 20 because the m's cancel. That is the x-coordinate for the center of mass. We're going to move on and do a similar calculation for the y-coordinate. So once again, we start out with 1 divided by the total mass of 5m. And now we're just looking at the y-coordinates. We've highlighted them in yellow. Remember, the mass of each piece is just m. So for the right side, you're going to have m times 40. The front side is m times 20. And just continue on in that pattern. There we have it. And now we'll simplify inside the bracket again. We're going to have 40m plus 20m plus another 20m plus 0 plus 20m. If you add all of the m terms inside of the brackets, you're going to get 100m. So just like before, you're going to get 100m over 5m. This simplifies to just 20 centimeters. So that's the correct answer for the y-coordinate of the center of mass. Let's do the z next. And here we do it one more time. We have 1 over the total mass. We're looking at the z-coordinates highlighted in blue. So we're going to have the mass times 20 plus the mass times another 20, and then just continue in that pattern. This time, when you simplify the contents of the brackets, you're going to actually get 80m, so be a little careful there. And then you'll have 80m divided by 5m, and if you cancel the m's and divide 80 by 5, you'll get 16 centimeters. So this is the correct answer for the coordinate of the z center of mass. That was an awkward way of saying that, wasn't it? It should have been the, co the z coordinate for the center of mass. It's been a long word. But anyways, thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it. If not, please don't feel obligated to do so.